hey everyone welcome to the channel so today we are diving into the basics of api authentication so whether you are new to apis or just looking to strengthen your understanding of uh, securing your api request this video will give you a clear overview of key authentication methods and why they matter so let us get started let us start by understanding what api authentication is so when two software system communicate via an api they often exchange some sensitive data. Now to ensure that on the authorized user or system have access to that data, the API requires some kind of authentication. Now this authentication can be some lock and key system. So you have a lock and a key and in this the API will have a lock and the client will have the key and whenever the client will make the request, it will have to provide a key to access the data. Now without authentication, definitely your API will be exposed to some unauthorized access and these unauthorized persons can use your data. Next, why is API authentication important? Think about it like accessing your bank account online. Okay. Now you will not want just anyone logging in your system and seeing your information. Now APIs functions the same way. Authentication ensures that only verified user or system can have access to your data now this is a verified user and then they can have the access to the data this verified user will have a key and this verified user can use this key to access that data and this ensures that the protected data is only accessed by the correct user and it prevents some any abuse to your actual data second point why api authentication is important is because of controlled user access it provides a facility called as controlled user access so you can see you have a server and is having different kind of data. It has a marketing data, sales data, business data. Now this data can be exposed using the same API that is the share API and you are and, and you are sharing different data. You can have different keys for different data access. You have a, you can have a marketing key, a sales key and a business key and those different keys can be used to access different data. You can also have an administrator key which can access all the data. Now this provides controlled user access to your data. There are four types which I will be covering in this video, but there are many types of authentication. But yes, these four types are the most used. Okay. So let us talk about first one that is the HTTP basic authentication. The second one is API key authentication. The third one is JWT authentication. And the fourth one is the OAuth authentication. Let us talk about the first type in detail. So HTTP basic authentication works in this particular way. What you can see in the diagram that you will have a client and the client want to access server. So first the client makes a request to access some protected data from the server. The server says, hey, give me the username and password to access this data because this data is protected. I am a protected API. Now the client again sends a request and this time it also sends the username and password and this time the server responds with the actual data if the username and password is correct all right this is the basic authentication where you provide a username and password now let us talk about the second way that is the api key authentication in this one again there is a client which wants to access the api server for this the client makes a request to the api server and along with this request it also sends the api key if the api key is correct the server will respond back with the data that is it can access the data and if the API key is wrong, it will not have access to the data. Instead, the server will respond with a 401 unauthorized access response. Let us talk about the next authentication type, which is the JWT authentication. So in this one, again, you will have a client which wants to access the server data. There is a user who will first log into the server. Once the user is able to log into the server, the server will respond with the JWT token. First, it will create the token and it will send it to the client. The client will have to store the JWT. Well, JWT basically stands for JSON Web Token. Next, whenever the client make another request to get the data from server, it will also send this JWT token along with the request. So in the third step, it sends the auth request with the JWT in the header. And this time the server will also again respond with the data. Well, this allows to make sure that every subsequent request you will not have to send a username and password instead the client will directly make a request the jwt uh, token will be there in the header and it will get back the data 
Now let us talk about OAuth authentication. In this one, there is an application which is trying to access the resource server, basically the server which is having the data. But to reach to this particular resource server, it will have to follow two different paths. First, there is a user server and then there is the authorization server. Let us talk about the first step. It will make an authorization request to the user server. Basically, it will try to log into the user server by providing some data and the user server will provide back the authorization grant. Basically, the user server will have the information of the particular user list which can access the data or the API. Next, with the particular authorization grant, the application will again make a request to the service API and this time it will make a request to the authorization server. This authorization server knows that hey, this is a valid authorization grant given by the user server. Now I can give this particular application an access token. This is the access token which can be used to access the actual resource server because next step is make a request to the resource server along with this particular access token and get back the protected resource. So this is how OAuth authentication works. Now let us talk about the different comparisons of authentication methods based on certain criteria like security, use case, advantages and disadvantages. So the HTTP basic authentication is having the lowest security and the OAuth authentication is having the highest security. Whereas the JWT is highly secured as well. Uh, API keys are having a medium level security. Talking about the different use cases where these authentication types are used. So when we have a simple API or internal systems, we generally use the basic authentication. But when we have public APIs, you will see that public API generally provide API key authentication. Talking about JWT, it is mainly used in the SSO application and distributed services. So think about it in an organization, you have a SSO application where you log in. Once you log into that SSO applications, you get back the JWT. Now using that JWT token, you can try to access all different applications of that organization. Talking about OAuth, we have third party integrations and social logins having this OAuth authentication implemented in their systems. What are the advantages? Again, HTTP basic authentication, since it is having a lowest security used in simple API, it is very easy to implement and do not require any sessions. Well, API keys authentication, they are simple as well and they do not even require the user credentials. JWT, it is stateless. Again, it is not simple to implement, but it is stateless basically and scalable as well. Basically, you can use it in a bigger applications. And talking about OAuth authentication, it allows for a fine grained access controls. So basically the example where we saw that a server is having marketing, sales and business data you will want to have different keys for dif uh, different access OAuth basically supports you in that particular use case definitely there is a disadvantage associated with every authentication type well uh, talking about http basic authentication it should always be over https and cannot be on http otherwise your user credentials will be exposed and the second disadvantage is basically your user credentials are used in every request talking about the api key authentication well they are hard to revoke so once a public api offers you an api key it will find it very hard to revoke or you know uh, provide any kind of granular permissions or new api well granular permissions means having to use different data from the same server by different users talking about jwt authentication well the token size is very large so you will have to store it in your client applications and again if you are storing something on your client applications passing it on to your server uh, it can be a security breach if it's not well managed. Talking about the OAuth authentication, well, it is very complex to implement, but yes, definitely it's highly secured and used in a lot of different places. So again, every different authentication have their own advantages and disadvantages. We have already seen it. So let us talk about what are the best practices for API authentications. Well, the points are HTTPS. Well, you have to use HTTPS whenever you are having an API. Uh, that's a good practice. You have to rotate your keys and tokens. Basically, when you have a key and token which you are give to your user, just make sure that you keep changing it or keep operating it after a certain period of time. And if possible, make sure that you use some kind of token based authentication. So token based authentications are like OAuth and JWT. And just make sure that you avoid any kind of hard coding whenever you are storing some kind of key or token. That is just do not store directly your actual key or token in, in your code. Whenever you are giving some kind of uh, token to a particular user, make sure that you just limit the permissions in that particular token because you will not want a uh, single token to have all the permissions of your API. So yes, these are different points and these are different things which we have seen about API authentications. 
So I hope this must have given you a clear view of what is an API, what is an API authentication. So next time we will try to implement these different authentication types using Python's request module. So that is what the series is all about. So I hope you like this video. So, so make sure you are connected with us in all possible ways and we will see you the next time.